I opposed the system of apartheid. Meeting Arab uh, as a firm was so important because it gave relevance, and that was before we'd thought of the term um, shaping a better world. It was engineering with a social conscience. I was born on a farm in a town that not many people know in South Africa, Port Elizabeth. I had, I think, a fairly normal education and got an engineering degree at the end of that. Then it was when I was doing my master's that I suppose you'd call a serendipitous event occurred. I was doing this master's which happened to require me uh, to learn to use a computer to analyse a particular kind of engineering structure. And computing was in its infancy there in those days. It had this huge room with this, their pride and joy, this IBM 1620 computer that had all of 16K of storage and occupied this great big air-conditioned room. It became a source of interest to practitioners around town who would visit to see what this meant and what they could do with it. And one of them happened to be the then uh, senior partner of Arab in, in Johannesburg. I gave him a little bit of advice and instruction on how he could use the computer. And when he came back the next time, uh, we bumped into each other and he said, why don't you join Arab? I think I was 20 or 21 years old. I was working in the public library dealing with love stories and detective books. And a friend of mine said she was going for this interview with Arab. She came back and she said she doesn't think it's for her. And on the spur of the moment, I decided maybe I'll go. A few days later, a less than one page letter of appointment, as it was in those days, with the important commitment that I would be moving to London um, within a few months. The whole vista opened up when I found myself in London and realised that this, what design really meant. That was the, the catalyst that I immediately saw the relationship with what I'd studied and what could be done. I spent over two years in the London office between 66 and 68. And that was an exciting time the firm was doing amazing things. I was spent most of my normal working day was in front of an old-fashioned drawing board and with a slide rule and learning to be a design engineer. I'd always intended to come home. My first serious job uh, that I was asked to run after I got back uh, was the Caserni Viaduct. This one was technically challenging. All of the motorway was where it was, close to the mining outcrop on land that people couldn't really build on. So all of that had to be designed for very significant ground movements as a result of potential mining subsidence in the future. And I was thrown in at the deep end uh, to, to lead that. I would say in retrospect that was grossly irresponsible. I really didn't have the experience. But I did have the numerical ability from the analysis work that I'd done to be able to handle the uh, analysis of it. In the early days I went to the sites and I enjoyed, I enjoyed seeing the end result of what I'd heard, you know, in the office. The construction industry was booming. Uh, projects like the Carlton Centre, which is a four-city block development with a 50-storey tower, a 30-metre deep basement, the standard bank hanging structure, which was unique in its own right, with a, also a 30-metre basement. And the interesting thing is, this was constructed using slip-formed concrete which is a technique of sliding the form as you go up. And this is probably the most complex use of slip forming in the world. 
I remember going on site and walking along the pre-stressed beams. And I remember when they were hauling a concrete mix truck up to the top to pull the concrete, we went out in force to watch this feat of engineering being done. We started work on the first uh, new terminal at Johannesburg Airport. The International Departure Lounge, it's a triangular pod which was created off-site and then it was moved into place when it was ready and just connected. And I think anybody leaving South Africa sits in that lounge. Um, it was a huge feat of engineering. So it was a time of, of growth and excitement and development and one got thrown into the deep end very quickly. We were very liberal. I remember they seconded me to the Progressive Party during the elections. So I went out of the office to the voting um, stations and the offices and I worked helping the Progressive Party. Uh, later on, and particularly stimulated by the 1976 Soweto riots, which are a very important event along the line to change in South Africa. Uh, come that, I decided that I'd rather do things I knew something about than just uh, be involved peripherally in, in politic, party political things. And as a consequence of that, the two issues that really were top of my mind were the whole question of dealing with the massive urbanisation that was taking place and trying to address the consequences of separateness in that because if you went in a helicopter over any South African city, you could see the massive imprint of apartheid very clearly. The other was engineering education. What a few of us decided upon, and I happened to end up in a leadership position in it for some years, was to establish an organization that became known as Protec, program for technological careers, which to, was really to take these students in these disadvantaged areas and give them the opportunity to, to know something about the world of work and the importance of math and science in that world of work. The, the exciting moment in 1982 when we ran our first vacation program in Soweto and the 300 young people, high school students that had registered, appeared at eight o'clock in the morning and spent three whole days enjoying this. And that organisation became a fully-fledged uh, one. And we changed the lives of tens of thousands of young people. By being involved in that, I think it gave our leaders in, in, in London some credibility that what we were doing deserved being there uh, and, and staying there at a time when many firms, of course, were leaving. Somewhere in the early 80s, I was invited to give a graduation address at Pitts University and, of course, dealt with essentially these topics of engineering with a social content, telling the graduates that there is more to, to life and their responsibilities than just doing good engineering. So, um, this is before Irv passed away, but um, it was in Christmas in 1975 and he wrote, our firm is bound to run into storms in the future and we must try not to repeat the general pattern that hardship produces of hardened attitudes and bickering. And if we stick together and try to understand and help each other, we have a better chance of overcoming our difficulties and we shall make a small contribution to saving the world's problems. We never formally declared ourselves as uh, supporting a party or be about being anti-apartheid as such, but no one was not aware that we were, including our clients, of course. So it increasingly made government work virtually inaccessible to Arab, and we were really the, the, the consultants dedicated to the private sector work, and many of our uh, uh, competitors who were from the other side got all the government work and grew to many times our size because of because of that. 
So your favorite project, tell me about that. It was the opportunity to lead a multidisciplinary team of firms to evaluate Cape Town's potential to win the 2004 Olympic Games. And we really came up with a very compelling story which succeeded in uh, Cape Town being nominated ahead of uh, Johannesburg and Durban as the city to put forward its bid to the IOC. And that story was, here is the most beautiful city in the world. It's been in a box for all this time because of apartheid. Um, it is ready to blossom with tourism. And there is a perfect synergy between the Olympic Games and the, that, that tourism because the Olympic Games drives the image building and drives the need for the facilities, airports, roads, transport, hotel accommodation and all. And at the same time, the city drives the Olympics because of its aura. And it was meeting uh, in uh, being on the same side as so many of the leaders of the ANC that one hadn't been able to come in contact with until a mere two or so years before this, um, prominent people in the ANC who were very much behind uh, this bid and who you were working with in a team situation. It, it is really says something about Arab that I've managed to go through all that period year on year being newly excited about the our consistency in breaking new boundaries and doing exceptional work. It never ceases to uh, inspire one that way.